Alright, so we have uh, Bailey's General Store here in Cineville Island, Florida. It is uh, Sunday, February 6th, and it's about 65 degrees out. The front just came through, unfortunately, because it used to be brilliantly sunny. And about 20 minutes ago, the front came through and the temperature dropped about 8 degrees. So we're heading from Bailey's now down Tarpon Bay uh, Road towards uh, to the, uh, the beach area, not, not towards the, the bay area. So uh, let's see, we're going to be talking about everything from real estate to uh, from, from residential real estate, commercial real estate, to gold mining, and to pirate treasure. And just exploring in general, Santa Bla Island. No, so I'm not gonna talk when passing people. So Sanibel uh, San Isabel. San is island. Isabel named after Saint Isabel. So that's where you get Sanibel from. Captiva was the pirate um I forget his name already. <laughs> Gasparilla. He he put all his imprisoned, imprisoned, hello, all his imprisoned uh, captives that he caught from all his pirate raids on Captiva, and hence the name Captiva. Look, I'm gonna say hello to everyone I pass. So anyway, uh, Gasparilla had a pirate protege, and I forget his name now. He also had an island base just south of Miami, that was after he got kicked out of Sanibel by Gasparilla, because this pirate, whose name I forget, I don't know if his name was Blackfoot or Blackbeard or whatever. Uh, it would have to be Blackbeard number two, because I know the first Blackbeard was, uh, hello. The first Blackbeard was like 100 years prior. Hello. So anyway, it's kind of cloudy out right now. Temperature was near 80. Now it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely pushing 69 with this cloud cover. And there's a there's a sharp breeze blowing. When you're bicycling four miles an hour, you can feel it. It's chilly. So tonight, definitely with this reinforcing weather, it's probably gonna get down to low 50s tonight. Which for South Florida, where I am, uh, it's cold. Anyway, getting back on Blackbeard, I think it was Blackbeard. I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll just call it Gasparilla's prodigy. Uh, he used to rob ships, and reportedly there's a treasure buried on Pine Island. And that's that's where uh, the Blackbeard's protege pirate would uh, go if there was like hurricanes, or if the sea, or or if he just had to uh, lay low. But when he wasn't laying low, he was on Sanibel looking for ships, and uh, Penarasa was. Uh, there's San Carlos Bay there, which is like a natural harbor. A lot of ships would take shelter in it from storms. And guess what? The pirates would prey on the ships taking shelter in that bay. So it was very lucrative for the, uh, the pirates because he wouldn't have to go that far out. He would just come show one cannon and take whatever he can get. And you know. But anyway, once he robbed uh, Captiva and he killed one of one of uh, Gasparilla's uh, pirate buddies, I guess, and stole a couple of his uh, prisoners. Then Gasparilla turned on uh, Gasparilla's prodigy, which I think is Blackbeard or Blackfoot or something like that. I think Blackfoot's an Indian, so his name must have been Blackbeard or something else. Anyway, I'll remember it. It's, uh, I think it starts with a B, but I could be, could be a mistake. Anyway, we're gonna bicycle on the beach here because that's what we do here. We do beach bicycling. Anyway, there's reportedly $3 million somewhere buried on Sanibel. Uh, rumor has it that the pirate treasure is buried somewhere between the lighthouse on Sanibel and uh, Tarpon Bay. There's actually a bay here called Tarpon Bay. And uh, that is also a natural kind of like harbor, but that would be for low draft ships. Three million dollars buried on Sanibel somewhere. That has not been found yet. And then uh, oh, there's also a, a reported
treasure that Gaspar's prodigy buried on Pine Island. But there could have been a. Uh, I should be bison here. There's no bison here. But it's just too tempting. I'll go a little slow. Or maybe I'll stop. It puts me further to the beach. Sorry, I couldn't resist. You know, we see a nice walkway like this, you just have to bring your bike on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there could be a treasure buried on Sandable and Captain. But a lot of what the pirates used to do is they used to take big coral. Oh, it's high tide. This is not going to be good. They took big coral boulders and they would take palm trees, cut them down, and they would dig a hole about eight feet deep, put the loot put the palm trees on top of it and then put the big like three ton coral block on top of the palm trees but what they failed to understand because obviously they didn't graduate with degrees in engineering is uh, when a hurricane were to come in and water salt water hits those logs those logs become buoyant and those logs can pick up a three four five ton coral boulder easy and float it away. So that's the power of water. When you submerge, especially dried out palm logs in water, uh, it doesn't take much for whatever's on top of those palm logs, because that's like, if palm logs dry out to like balsa wood. So it doesn't take much, much water that is, to lift a three ton, five ton coral boulder. Right, yeah. Definitely beach bicycling is out of the question today. Well, I guess we're gonna have to bicycle not on the beach. I'm wondering how to get back without doubling back. I may have to double back. Let's see. Probably be smarter. Alright. If they just start. Alright. I wanted to film the beach, but I guess I'm going to have to fork out filming the beach. Because it's kind of cloudy. Nobody wants to see the beach cloudy. People are going to be leaving shortly anyway. It's still pretty warm here at the beach. You got, you got the Gulf Moderation Breeze. It still feels about 71, 72 right here on the beach. But you get inland or you get up to 4 miles an hour on the bike, and you can feel the temperature is dropping. It was raining this morning. went on garage selling. And if you see my other video garage selling, you see that I scored. I bought. I can't. I can't believe this. I like looking at jewelry, and someone was selling a whole bunch of necklaces. And you know, most jewelry is made out of brass or copper. You know, maybe a little bit of aluminum. But you take aluminum, zinc, uh, aluminum, zinc, copper, mix it together. It looks like gold. It's high tide. There's no beach. So anyway, I looked at this, and it says 12 carat, um, hello, I saw 12 carat, 18 carat, 20 carat, and 22 carat gold, and um, I felt it, it could be filled gold, in other words, it could be gold with lead in it, it makes it, makes it feel really heavy, but in either case, I, I, I bought a lot of it for $10, put it that way. Well, I might be able to melt it down to like two ounces of pure gold. So anyway, we're coming back out because there's just not enough beaches. It's not going to be fun to walk down the beach. So we're going to have to go down West Gulf Drive. So here's a cute puppy passing. All right. How about you? So there's a lot of bicycle paths here at Sanibel. It makes it really enjoyable. Um, I could have videotaped into Sanibel. In fact, I could have videotaped coming across the causeway, but I was fighting a headwind and I was afraid that the microphone would just record all this wind. And right now I'm going away, from, I'm going with the wind, so there's not much of a wind. The wind's up my back. Hello. I always like to be courteous to people. Hello. 
right. So I haven't come to Sanibel for the last, gosh, almost 50 years. Maybe even more than 50 years. Yeah, I think I've been coming here for more than 50 years. So I've seen this island change from like West Gulf Drive here. This used to be a sand road. Um, I'm, I'm telling you. In fact, the, the roads to the beach were paved before uh, Periwinkle was. So Periwinkle Way was a sand road. And these roads here were actually paved first because the con concrete trucks basically just worked their way from the lighthouse down the beach, building condominiums. Hello. So that's why you have the roads, East Gulf Drive, Middle Gulf Drive, West Gulf Drive, they were uh, paved. Now, if East Gulf Drive never connected to Middle Gulf Drive, the Middle Gulf Drive never originally connected to uh, West Gulf Drive. Uh, sometimes the concrete trucks, well, most of the concrete trucks would go down Periwinkle Way and lay the concrete, uh, you know, drive. And uh, because there were so many concrete trucks, keeping Periwinkle Way paved, or at least in a decent state, was really hard. So it was cheaper just to, uh, you know, lay crushed rock. And uh, But uh, it was fun. I remember those days. Uh, you really couldn't drive more than 15, 20 miles an hour in Periwinkle Way um, because of all the uh, potholes that, that were on Periwinkle Way. I mean, literally 15, you, you, did, you did not have to put a speed limit. That's, that's the good thing. There was no speed. If you want to go 60 miles an hour on potholes, hey, more power to you. But in the summertime, when the potholes would were to form, obviously when it rains, your tire hits it, kicks up some sand, makes a hole. Uh, during the dry season, not a problem. Um, it's when it rains. That's when the potholes and sand. And that's why you need to have paved roads. <laughs> so they did a good thing paving these roads. Um, I like how Sandball, though, keeps its wild look. Here you have these bushes. These are a type of uh, mangrove. But mixed in the mangrove, I see uh, palmetto palms. I see some cypress. There's a lot of sea grape. Um, there's some live oak. Live oak is really popular with the squirrels and big, big and popular on Sanibel. So anywhere where you see squirrels, well, squirrels like to dig holes and plant seeds. So and they love their acorns. So live oaks have acorns. I see a, I see a lot of um, uh, palmetto palms, and, and it could also be cabbage palms. I'm not sure. Cabbage palms and palmetto palms are pretty close. I see over there. There's some. Uh, I really like king palms on my lawn. I'm not sure if those are king palm or if they're just um, royal palm with the pods cut off. It's probably that's probably what it is because king palms grow big and majestic, and they're, those are kind of short and. Short things like that normally are uh, royal palms. Royal palms are nice, and they, royal palms, just like king palms, can withstand a hurricane. They, they anchor themselves with a big, fat, deep tap root that goes down like 30, 50 yards. So they're, they're, they're good. Even during the driest season, they can pump their own water up. Um, it's stuff like queen palms that have really narrow um, tap roots that, or, their, or their, their root system doesn't go down that deep. Hello. And queen palms definitely will be pushed over, even with a modest hurricane, like 70 to 100 miles an hour wind. The, the uh, Hurricane Donna came through here in 1960. Uh, it, it pretty much wiped out Fort Myers. Whatever was in Fort Myers Beach, uh, it pretty much bulldozed everything. Uh, but since then, we really haven't had a hurricane. We've had uh, Hurricane Irma and in Fort Myers. That was one of the biggest. Uh, we had hur Hurricane Wilma, which had a northern wind shear of 140 miles an hour. We had Hurricane Charlie, had 100, almost 130. Wilma was the big one. Um, no, Irma, or excuse me, Irma was the big one, because that one stayed over my house for almost two hours. And the eye wall is what I'm talking about. The eye wall stayed over my house because it made a right turn. And it just so happened, the right turn made the eye wall stay over my house for two hours as it made a, a right turn. Oh, how nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Just have to wave at him. All right, we're going to take Algiers. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Algiers is the name of the uh, boat. The, there, there used to be a, uh, before the Sandball Causeway was built in 1960, 
there was uh, two ferries that would car ferry from Punarasa over to, to Lighthouse Way. Hello. And those two car ferries could hold about six car ferries each. The problem with those car ferries is that they left on the hour and they, between six and eight cars each, um, and most of those the vehicles going across were concrete trucks. <laughs> so, um, you, concrete trucks or dump trucks carrying fill. So, you, you really had to get here like a half hour, 45 minutes early. It was really just tedious getting across. So, when Hurricane Donna wiped out both car ferries, one, one of them tried to run um, to deep water and was caught off the coast here and huge waves slammed it ashore and here's where it rested and this was always called Algiers Ave because that was the name of the boat the car ferry that washed up on the beach here and it was kind of cool because even until the late 70s you could there was no fence you could walk on it explore you could look at the paddle wheel look at the machinery it was pretty cool to go and look at that that boat I guess I, the, the car ferry business went out and they didn't they didn't want to salvage it it was a wooden boat wooden boat with steel machine or iron machinery I guess um, the other ferry I don't know what happened to it but uh, obviously when they opened the causeway up now you didn't have to wait in line and uh, I'm not sure if they I don't think they charge three dollars right off the bat but it's been three dollars for uh, a long while um, back in this hello hello back in the 70s it used to be 50 cents to uh, or uh, uh, 50 cents a ticket. I think it was uh, seven or eight dollars a booklet. You got a discount if you bought it in advance. But people used to, uh, tourists used to pass the books on to other tourists. So they decided to end that and put metal the, the uh, decals on the windows so that you couldn't do that. And, uh, uh, that's when you know just prices started getting ridiculous because every time they they would implement new technology like that, it would cost a lot of money. So then it started going up. So the price of going over the bridge went from a dollar fifty to two, two fifty, and then three. It was at three for the longest while, and now I think it's up to six. That's uh, just totally ridiculous. It's almost like driving into Manhattan. You have to pay like fifteen or sixteen dollars. I don't know how much it is. Uh, we just passed the Sanibel Cemetery, which uh, I guess the, the early inhabitants of Sanibel. Uh, Sanibel at the turn of nineteen hundred um, was a farming community, so all of Sanibel was pretty much bulldozed, and it was just you know, some migrants and. Uh, um, you know, and, and Captiva was a, a leper colony at the turn of the century. Um, pretty much between um, 1820 and 1840, that's when the U.S. Navy pretty much destroyed all the pirates, killed them all. Um, and the Seminole, Wall, the Seminole Wars helped extinguish the pirates too, because the pirates were also doing illegal trading with the Seminoles. And the U.S. Navy at that time. Uh, was trying to, you know, take control and emphasize the fact that they're in control of Florida, so. Hello. So, uh. Thank you. Oops. Hey, I have to cut the hypotenuse. Why not? So, anyway. So we just left, um, we're, we're in the um, Middle Gulf Drive now. This, this, this was actually a new extension that they put in in the mid 80s. This wasn't here. Um, Middle Gulf Drive used to end right up here where this uh, yellow, uh, orange sign is. And uh, this was basically a, a power line, power line easement. And if you were lucky after they trimmed the power lines, you could walk between Middle Gulf Drive and and uh, West Gulf Drive, um, but um, normally uh, they don't they don't do the power lines like once every other year, so you have to walk on the beach basically. So, see, Oldie Middle Gulf Drive. That's the name of the road. It used to be called just Middle Gulf Drive because that's where it went. Again. Back in the uh, well, back in the late seventies, everything to the to the left of me over here uh, was pretty much vacant. There was hardly anything over here, and stuff to the right of me. Well, Sundial was here 
and they're just building this big condominium next to it. Um, again, thinking about those buried treasures. I don't think they put the buried treasures were on the the, the Gulf side. The, the, the treasures buried on Sanibel would have to be buried on the Bay side. So if you're looking for buried treasure, it's not over here. The dunes, that's a good place to look. Um, any community or any house between the lighthouse and the dunes on that side of the bay, that's that's a good place to look for it. Normally it would be eight feet deep, but of course a lot of the fill, they filled Sanibel, so it could have to be 12 feet deep. Um, and then right up from from there all the way up to Tarpon Bay. Um, and if you see any mounds, that's a good indication that they keep on saying these are Indian burial mounds. That that was a myth because the Indians used to bury their valuables in mounds too. So if you see a, an Indian burial, burial mound, especially like on on uh, Lover's Key or uh, uh, there's there's an island actually called Big Mound Key, that reportedly is a lot of the independent pirates used to bury their loot there. So the pirates had a type of a type of bank going on at Big Mound Key. It's illegal to dig there, but some of that island is uh, privately owned. So. I don't know how that fares, but if you had ground penetrating radar, and you can go down 40, 50 feet, I'm pretty sure you're gonna find something. Obviously, the uh, anything that's been underground for 30 or, or 300 years, uh, gold will still be there, although it'll look pretty, pretty disgusting looking. Silver will be black as anything. Um, so the seawater salt content will just kind of like melt the silver together, act like a type of solder. Um, but, uh, yeah, Mel, Mel Fisher he was looking for the Atosha, and he found the Atosha, and he found the other, he found half of the trailing boat. I think it was a 1622 plate fleet. Correct me if I'm wrong, I forget the exact year, but he found the Atosha uh, down by Key West. And then he found the, uh, I forget what, what the stern of forecastle, but he found the back of the boat of this other boat that I think begins with a B or an S. I don't know what it is. I think, I think it was the Anna Maria or something, or I don't know where it was. But anyway, he found uh, half of that boat and half of the cargo, but the other half of the gold is still spread out in 50 to 100 feet deep water, and the sands there keep on changing, and gold sinks uh, a foot every 100 years, so unless it hits coral, that's the thing. If gold comes in contact with coral, then the coral will prevent it from going deeper. But if it's still on sand, well, the tides are going to keep on churning and gold every hundred years drops off one foot. So all the gold and all the boats that sunk on the seaward side of the Florida Reef, like you go down to the Keys from Key West all the way to Miami, there's a reef as islands. Not just the islands that they built the, the Route 1 um, train bridges and then eventually became Route 1. Um, about five miles further out to sea, there's a reef. And that reef pretty much protects the Florida Keys from a lot of the, the wave action, a lot of the... And, uh, but on that side, on the seaward side of the Florida Reef, it starts dropping off, and it drops off to about three to 4,000 feet. And any boat that's sunk there... Hello. Any boat that's sunk on the seaward side of the Florida Reef, that gold, probably by now, because of the way there's big dunes that are, are pushed by the uh, Florida Strait, the current there. Um, it's probably gone the full 3,000 feet down. So um, that's where the gold is. Hello. And we're passing Sanibel East condominiums. Again, yeah, we're still on. Uh, on Middle Gulf Drive. Basically, to my left, there's the Middle Gulf uh, Country Club. Well, there's a canal, but on the other side of the canal, to my left, there's the, the Middle Gulf Country Club. That is act. That's the the best, cheapest golf you're gonna find on Sanibel. On Sanibel, you have the dunes. So I was talking about that is that. If, if you like water, there's a lot of water hazards. And the green is really small, and usually surrounded by water. 
and uh, the fairway is narrow and the rough is short and the water is there and it's, it's, it's a tough course but the sanctuary is actually a tougher course because it has what, what I call tidal rough so it's got mangrove and there's almost literally there's maybe three or four feet of rough between the fairway and the mangrove and it's tidal so if it's high tide you've got tidal water going in there and the, um, that that course also has a lot of alligators and crocodiles signing themselves <laughs> crocodiles would be the salt water alligators are freshwater uh, freshwater alligators can go in salt water for a limited amount of time and crocodiles the same thing they can go in freshwater just that uh, you know, so the, it's, it's the different feeding habits where the crocodiles normally go after, you know, the, the waterfowl that, that tends to uh, live in the uh, mangrove there. And, uh, you know, the other alligators in the freshwater, they go after whatever else they can get. Freshwater prey, like, there's a lot of rabbits on this island. There's raccoons, there's uh, lizards, and there's birds like this. Cutie. All right, and there and there's a lot of raccoons in this island. They they scavenge a lot of the dumpsters. Hello. 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 So still no gulf shy. Again, this this road here was paved long before Parwinkle Way was. It says two periwinkle away, but we're actually gonna go to the lighthouse. I wanna see how many people are still here. Hello. Hello. Alright. So to my right used to be the Ramada Inn. Then it was a holiday inn for a long time. Now it's called the Sanibel Island Beach Resort. Wow. So times change. So this is pretty much the uh, color of the sample quartz. They have the traditional blue court with the green. Uh, that's just their design. And you can see most tennis courts on Sanibel have that same color. Most, I'm not saying all of them, but most of them have that same color. That's probably because there's probably only one tennis court uh, manufacturing company. <laughs> And, and, and they probably repair all the courts on the island, so they probably buy the same paint. And, hey, it costs them less. Probably there's a there's, there's a really good deal on blue paint. All right, so here's another access point to the beach. Let's check it out. This is Narita Street. Uh, this street actually hooks up with East Gulf Drive. So Middle Gulf Drive and East Gulf Drive hook up. But let's see how the beach is here because. I don't know, we may get lucky and uh, the tide is probably still high, but the beach may allow bicycle. Nice. Right, so I get people in the pools. Hello. Every time it comes to Sanibel, no matter how many times, it's still beautiful. This, this, I like the wildness. They like, they don't, they're not prim and proper like Naples or Marco Island. They just leave things wild, and you know, it's, it looks so much nicer when you leave things wild like that. All right, I know I'm gonna have to get off my bike because this is soft sand. I have two-inch tires. I wish I had three-inch, but oh well, three-inch still may not do it. This is really soft. Now, bicycling on the beach in Miami area in Fort Lauderdale totally prohibited. Even in West Palm Beach, I tried to bicycle in front of uh, Mar a Largo, and the sand there is like this, right up to the, the waves breaking. So there's absolutely no way that you could bicycle on the beach. And, and they and they have uh, Coast Guard patrols on the beach and in craft off the beach. And they have bicycle patrols too on the beach that try to intercept you. Although they pretty much walk their bikes. Oh yeah, this is... 
This beach is a little wider here. It looks like I can buy stone. This is good. See, there's a lot of diehards out. Diehards, they're hoping the sun will come back, but it won't. I looked at radar already. If I see a, shell, a seashell, I'll let you know, because Sanibel is world-renowned for having the best seashells. At least in this part of the world. There are some Mexican islands I've been to that have great seashells, but Sanibel, every year, just has different types of seashells. There's a lot of um, coral reefs that are offshore, and every storm that comes by jostles them loose. Right now I see a lot of scallops. Uh, the, well, the Florida common shell, obviously. Um, I see a lot of heart cockles. This is what a heart cockle looks like. So this is a full heart cockle. See how it has uh, two sides to it? So you can make uh, seashell designs out of this. Like, I make pelicans out of this. It looks like the... Uh, you know, the, pel the trunk of the pelican, then put putting another one of these on the top. Looks like a, uh, a, uh, what's my gosh, the head of a pelican. Well, you put a pen shell up there. Pen shell would make, make it look like the head of a pelican. Let me see if I can find a pen shell. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Pen shells are, are common too, but they're very brittle, so they break. Usually you find pen shells immediately after a storm or in the morning. By the end of the day, they've all been stepped on and broken. I can't really see one down by the surf. It's terrible. But, anyway, I'm not gonna bore you guys with seashelling because I love seashelling, but I like looking for wintel traps. Those little tiny white ones. They're really hard to find, but usually they're right in your nose. Like right here, you see a, a place with a lot of color? That's where the wintel traps are. So anytime you see a lot of color, uh, actually a lot of seashells hide in a lot of color. Big seashells, they're pretty much out where the waves are breaking. Right where the waves are breaking, you get a shell scoop or you scoop down. Like, here's a, here's a good shell. This is a olive shell. It's got sand on it, but um, olive shells are like naturally polished, so they're really nice. And even, even after they dry out, they're still gonna have that nice polished look. But you spray them with a little bit of um, enamel or whatever and before you make the necklaces, so that way they're, they're waterproof. Uh, you don't want your seashells deteriorating on you. But uh, I'm going to throw this guy back. Oh, I did. I made it. And now he's, oh, he was floating a little bit. Now it sank. All right. So let's get back on the cruise here. All right.